What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So if you're in the market for a new Samsung smartphone right now, I actually think this is a great time to buy. The flagship S22s have been out for a couple of months, prices are falling a little, and you know you won't get caught with something else launching anytime soon. The budget and mid-range A-series lineup is almost filled out already for this year. The A53 has launched, the A23, 33, and 73 are shipping soon, the A03S and A13 are both fantastic budget options, and with all these new 2022 devices pretty much out now, previous year's smartphones have hit their lowest prices. So if you want a great phone at a huge discount and you don't mind it being a year or two old, I've got some suggestions for that as well. So in this video, I'm gonna go over what I consider to be the best Samsung smartphones to buy across all prices and budgets. We'll talk about where to snag the best deals. I'll give you my thoughts on whether some of these devices are good long-term investments still. And actually, if you wanna get started on your own with some price and device comparisons, I would highly recommend checking out Navi, who were kind enough to sponsor this video. Navi is a shopping tool designed specifically for smartphones. They make it super easy to find all the best deals, all all in one place. Their phone navigator service scans thousands of different promotions to find you the best price for the smartphone you want. You can search for a particular device, or you can take a short quiz, pick what smartphone features you like, and Navi will recommend a few different smartphones based on your preferences. Navi will then show you the best prices currently available from all the major retailers, so you can see carrier deals as an existing customer or if you're willing to switch. By the way, Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile all have stellar deals right now for the flagship phones between $7 $700 and $800 off with a trade-in and new line. And if you find a deal you like, Navi will take you right to it without having to do any more searching. If you don't find the right deal, Navi can also notify you later on when prices go down so you can continue to stay informed. Navi is free to use and is honestly one of the best resources I've found to help you save money on your smartphone purchase. Check it out at yournavi.com or click the link in the video description to give it a try. To kick things off, let's start with the best budget option and that would be the A13 5G. I recently reviewed this phone, so check out that video if you wanna know all my thoughts, but it basically boils down to a couple important factors. First, this phone is widely available and competitively priced. While it launched at about $250, carriers are already discounting this phone down to as low as 180 for existing customers, and in some cases, it's a free device if you're willing to switch. The phone itself also gives you a lot for your money. Not only is it a significant upgrade over the A12, mainly with the processor and overall performance and silky smooth 90 hertz display. This phone is definitely faster than you might think, but it's also the cheapest 5G capable device from Samsung now too. Sure, it still has some compromises, like the 720 resolution display, but overall the A13 5G is my pick for the best budget Samsung phone you can buy right now. And like I mentioned, Check out my full review on this phone if you want to learn more. I think this is one of the most well-rounded and best bang for your buck devices Samsung has come out with really in the last couple of years. Now, I should also mention that yes, there is technically a cheaper Samsung device available, the A03S, and while that phone is okay, I think it just has too many compromises in comparison. No 90 hertz screen, slower older specs, a worse camera setup. Sure, it's also free for most carriers and prepaid networks, but even if you have to pay a little more to get the A13 5G, I think you're getting a significantly better device in almost every measurable way. If you just need a phone, any phone that's specifically a Samsung or Android device, the A03S is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just that the A13 5G is that much better. If you want to talk value, though, the best overall bang for your buck smartphone that Samsung still kind of offers is the S20 FE. You guys know that I actually think this is the best smartphone Samsung has ever released, and it holds a special place in my heart. But regardless of my own bias, this is a device that still packs a punch, even after about two years. You're able to find this phone now with a special AT&T offer, for example, or usually under $400 from Amazon renewed. And what you get is a big flagship caliper device with really minimal compromises for a fraction of the price. If you have this phone, I think this is a great device to hold for the long term, another two or three years at least. And even if you buy it right now, you've got Android 12 ready to go with Android 13 promised and comparatively spec for spec. This phone has like 90% of the features compared to even the flagship S22 lineup. I think Samsung accidentally made the S20 FE too good when they released it. High refresh rate display, flagship Snapdragon processor, phenomenal camera, fun colors too. It kind of made the flagship S20 a poor buy at the time. And even now, 
now, considering the half dozen other S series phones Samsung seems to have released, I don't think there's a better S series phone than this one. I do just briefly want to mention that still relatively new S21 FE. Now, unfortunately, while there's literally nothing wrong with the S21 FE, and in fact, it's a similarly good value device, the problem with it really is just that it came out like six months too late. It's an S21-ish device that came out basically with the S22 lineup, and it was also priced like $50 to $100 too much, in my opinion, when you take into consideration the current smartphone market. Fortunately, you can snag an S21 FE now from a carrier and secure a pretty good deal, but I wouldn't pay full retail price unlocked for this phone. I think there are better options out there, like just grabbing last year's flagship S21 instead of the FE. It just makes way more sense. If you want the best all-around deal and don't care how old your phone is, the oldest I'd go now is the Samsung S10 lineup. This was the flagship from 2019, which really isn't that old. And actually, spec-wise, this phone still holds up well. Got an AMOLED screen, 1440 resolution, Snapdragon 855, and most importantly, it received its Android 12 update recently. So it feels like a new or at least somewhat current flagship device, specifically from a software perspective. I still think it has a great camera setup too. It offers a premium build, and it also depreciated to about as low as could be. This is a $230 phone now from Amazon, which is just crazy. I think if you're coming from like a budget A-series phone and want to stay under $300, the S10 makes a ton of sense. It's a couple years old, sure, but it's not that far removed from the flagships of today. It still has some life left in it, and it is very inexpensive now, to say the least. Now, I know some of you would actually prefer the latest and greatest, and to that I say the best new phone in the Samsung lineup right now is actually the A53 5G. That might come as a bit of a surprise when you consider the fact that it offers really minor improvements and upgrades compared to the A52. But remember, this category is strictly best new phone out right now. And for the price, $450 unlocked or hugely discounted via a carrier deal, and for the specs and features you get for that price, it is the best overall new device when you factor all of that in. You get a 120 hertz AMOLED display, brand new Exynos processor, bigger battery, better cameras, and quite a few years of Android updates, which makes it a solid long-term investment. Now, arguably, if you have an A52 from last year, there's no real reason to upgrade. But if you have something else, something older, something lower on the smartphone ladder, and you have to have something brand new from this year, this is the one I'd recommend. So let's get back into the flagship phones for just a second because I want to outline my perspective on both last year's S21 flagship and this year's new S22 lineup. It's no secret that once again this year the new S22, the regular and the plus at least, really aren't that different from the S21. Because of that, and due to the fact that the S21 is now well under $500 renewed or heavily discounted from carriers, I would either A, grab that phone instead of the S22, you'll save a ton of money and you won't even be missing out on anything, or B, stick with the S21 if you have it currently and wait another year or so for a more significant upgrade. I'm of the opinion that there's really no reason to upgrade your device every single year anymore when you consider the prices and the lack of any big updates. That's why I have a tough time fully recommending the top of the line newest flagships in this case, but if you specifically want this year's flagship, the one I'd recommend is actually the S22 Ultra. I don't make that recommendation lightly though, this is a very, very expensive device, even with some carrier deals happening right now. It's big, it's unique, the S Pen is either a must-have or irrelevant feature depending on your perspective and usage, but it's the only new S22 that's actually new-ish, that's different, that's unique, that's feature packed and then some. It's totally fresh from the previous ultras of years past and if you've been holding on to any given Samsung Note device, this is the phone you've been waiting for. With that being said, my final recommendation, specifically for S Pen lovers, or maybe those of you who want to give it a try, is the Note 10 from a couple of years ago. And this really comes down to one thing, the price. This phone now sells for just a smidge over $300 on Amazon. This was a ridiculously expensive device when it came out a couple of years ago, but honestly, compared to even the S22 Ultra, it's only a couple of steps down in comparison. You still get the same general S Pen writing and app experience, it's kind of the whole point. Top tier flagship specs, it's fast, it's overly powerful. The downside is that it's probably not going to get the Android 13 update, but everything else about this phone is a huge plus, mostly when you factor in that ridiculously low price now.
So there you go, those are the Samsung smartphones that I would recommend right now if you're in the market for something new, something different, or a particularly good deal overall. What do you guys think? Is there a phone I didn't mention that you would personally recommend? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know your thoughts, of course. But hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.